Hey, what's up guys? It's Tibbs, and as I'm sure a lot of you guys have already heard by now, we just got some big piece of news coming out of Blizzard Entertainment regarding Classic WoW, and that is the second, number two, the second Dev Water Cooler update titled Dev Water Cooler Inside the World of Warcraft Classic BlizzCon Demo. Before I get started, guys, uh, we are going to read the post together here on stream. Um, I'm not going to go into every single line. I'm not going to read every single paragraph of this thing. But I'm going to highlight some of the key most important parts of this that I think a lot of you guys uh, will be concerned with and some of the not so good things about it. Because this post, at the end of the day, I think a lot of people are going to be maybe a little disappointed with it. But overall, I do think it signals a very positive uh, step in the right direction. And I do think it reaffirms what a lot of us have wanted for a long time. And that is hashtag no changes. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And we will start off with the first line, the first line from the what to expect paragraph. And that is the following. From the beginning of this project, the team's mission has been to be as faithful as possible to World of Warcraft as it existed back in 2005, uh, I'm sorry, 2005 and 2006. If you guys did not think uh, we were going to get no changes, or if you thought that Blizzard was going to intentionally change anything about Classic WoW, I think this, along with everything else we know about the project, everything else they've said in the past, at the end of the day, I feel like the changes versus no, change, no changes debate is kind of a dead horse. I feel like Blizzard wants to make this the vanilla as it once was. I don't think we're getting a WoW remastered. I don't think we're getting a vanilla plus. I do think we are going to get vanilla WoW as it was back in the day, albeit with some small minor changes to interfaces and stuff like that. And they actually talk about that in this post too. So no changes, still alive. I think still the goal, and I think that's what Blizzard wanted since day one. As we move further along the post, um, we do get uh, a reveal on the two zones that we will be testing in the demo. And I don't want to say I called it, but I called it. It is going to be the Barrens and Westfall. If you guys remember when they announced the demo a couple of weeks back, they said we would have two iconic zones that would be playable in the demo. And one of them uh, one of them like referenced the Defias and the other one referenced the Quillbore. A lot of people were saying Elwyn and Duratar, but when I think of Defias, I don't think of Elwyn. I think of Westfall, Moonbrook, you know, Deadmines. Uh, when I think of Quillbore, I think Consumed by Hatred and the Barrens, all the Quillbore and the Barrens, um, Mancrick, all that stuff. So... I definitely thought we were going to get Westfall and the Barrens. Looks like that was correct. And uh, it's great, honestly, because we're going to be messing around with talents a lot more too. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. Now, just because we're getting Westfall and the Barrens doesn't necessarily mean we have access to the entire zones. And Blizzard clarifies that right here. Because it's a demo, there will be some limitations on the content. For example, the Deadmines and Wailing Caverns dungeons won't be available. I expected that. The only PvP will be dueling. That's very interesting. I didn't even expect them to have dueling in the demo. So if anything, that's a bonus for my expectations. I did not expect that at all. And guys, I just want to say this right now. Um, if it's possible, if we're able to get people on together at the same time, I will be hosting a dueling tournament, and I'll talk about that at the end here. But uh, get hyped for that if we're able to pull it off. You won't be able to visit zones other than Westfall and the Barrens. So again, only two zones. They already talked about this a few weeks back. That should not surprise anyone. But this part, this part will surprise a lot of you, myself included. We also typically limit the time our BlizzCon attendees can play a demo and that will be the case for BlizzCon WoW Classic demo players at home. Meaning that your demo experience will be time restricted. In order to maximize the number of people who can try out the demo, initially you'll be logged off after playing for a certain amount of time to give somebody else a turn. We haven't determined exactly how long this time limit will be yet, but we're also planning some flexibility. So if we're able to relax the restriction and still give everyone who wants to play a great experience, then we'll do that. Don't worry, your character will be there when you get back in for your next session and all of your progress will be saved. So, essentially, you are going to have restricted play sessions. However, the progress you make during your play session will be saved on your account. How do I feel about this, guys? Well, I think uh, it goes without saying, I did not expect this personally. They didn't indicate anything like this during their last announcement, which, uh, which causes me to believe that this is something they decided recently. I don't think they originally intended on time restricting the demo, but I think what probably happened was after they announced the classic demo on the virtual ticket, they probably sold a lot of virtual tickets. And they were probably looking at themselves like, oh my God, we just sold a couple hundred thousand of these. We have no way 
to store everybody on the same server or on multiple servers. Because at the end of the day, guys, they have to host this somewhere. They've got to host it on their infrastructure. And if they're just trying to host a demo, there's no way they have like 200 servers available for a demo. It's just not fiscally possible. So um, I'm guessing that's what probably happened. And they're trying to adjust things now to, to make things work out. Am I upset with it? Um, I don't want to say upset. Obviously, it would have been nice to not have time restrictions. That is not the thing that upsets me with this post. Because at the end of the day, the demo is something temporary. It was only going to last six days anyways. It already was time restricted if you think about it that way. So I'm not too upset about this. I'm upset about something else that we'll talk about in just a little bit. You'll start the demo at level 15. While we know that starting at level one holds out a lot of nostalgia, you're also limited in what you can do when you're first starting out. Given the time constraints of a BlizzCon demo, we wanted to give players some freedom to explore and experiment with core systems like talents or professions, which are unavailable at level one. I completely agree with this, guys. Um, this is why I didn't think they would have a level one demo too. I mean, think about it. The average level one to 10 time on private servers is like two hours for most people. And that's a pretty good time overall. Imagine the average uh, one to 10 time for players that have never played vanilla before. That's going to be like four or five hours possibly. I do like the idea of starting at level 15. I know a lot of you guys might disagree, but I do think it's a good idea because you have talents available. You have professions available as they say here. Although I don't know how you're going to be able to pick up professions if you're only going to be in Westfall and the Barrens. I don't think there's profession trainers at the crossroads. I know there's some at Razor Hill. Crossroads, I'm not sure. At level 15, warriors have defensive stance, priests have psychic extreme, hunters have their pet, and so on. So at this level, you really start to feel like your class has some of the key tools that make the class distinct. Additionally, all characters will be capped at level 19. We talked about that dueling tournament. We'll get to that in a second. But you can create multiple characters, so you can try out as many different classes and races as you'd like. I think that's great, guys. I think that's fantastic. I honestly was scared they might have locked it to a certain amount of characters or a certain amount of classes or something like that. The fact that all characters and all races and classes are, are available is fantastic. I know I'm going to be playing every single class to level 19. I know I'm going to be playing every single race to level 19. So uh, it gives us a lot of content to try out, a lot of things to mess around with. I think that's great. And capping at level 19 is fine, honestly. I think that's fine. You get enough talents, um, you get to mess around a little bit, you get all your abilities, you know, a lot of your abilities at least. But moving on to the more interesting sections. What's new? As we mentioned in our original Dev Water Cooler blog we posted in June, we're building WoW Classic on the foundation of our modern base code. That means you'll be able to download the demo through the Blizzard Battle.net desktop app and use Battle.net chat integration in game to ask your friends to come check out the Barons with you. Okay, I'm going to stop right here because this is the most important takeaway for me personally from this entire post. I know some people are going to be disappointed about the time restriction stuff, but at the end of the day, as I said before, guys, that's a temporary thing. This was going to end in six days anyway. Who cares about that? I'm looking at the long-term permanent changes that look to be happening here. And um, the first change I've seen so far here is the chat integration in game. Now, we've talked about this a lot on the Classic Cast. I've talked about this a lot on stream. I don't think I've made a video about it before, so I probably will do that in the next couple of days, although I'm like really behind on videos. Chat integration, Battle.net chat integration into Classic WoW is very, very dangerous. And I'll say why, guys. It can essentially create a hub for cross-faction communication. And cross-faction communication in vanilla not only was it against the original TOS, but it also means things like Devil Sword Mafias active on servers, World Boss Mafias active on servers, a lot of cross-faction collusion that could result in negative gameplay with players. And I think most importantly, it breaks the fantasy of being Alliance versus Horde. You know, one of the biggest things about Classic WoW is the world PvP, is the community, is the faction rivalry. How are you going to take that away by allowing people to communicate cross-faction? Now, bear in mind, this line doesn't necessarily confirm that. All they say here is that you have battled on a chat integration in game and the ability to ask your friends to come check out the Barons with you. It doesn't necessarily confirm that you'll be able to speak cross faction, but as it stands now, the door is definitely open for that. And Blizzard, if you're watching this video, please, please, please reconsider that stance. Please implement some kind of tool to block cross faction communication for players that are playing classic WoW, at least on the same server. Um, it's very, very important. It's very, very important. Um, removing that removes a lot of what made cl Classic WoW great, removes a lot of the faction rivalry, and opens up players to a lot of very negative experiences. And again, I'll probably make a video about this pretty soon here, but it's something very, very important. 
Please, Blizzard, I know you want to include Battle.net, but it does have consequences, so please keep those in mind. Moving along here, you'll also find there's improved support for widescreen monitors. I think a lot of people expected that. So instead of the old world looking stretched and distorted on your widescreen, it'll look like it did on your old 4x4, uh, 4x3 monitor, only bigger. Totally fine with that. Expected that. I expect 4K compatibility. I expect all, you know... Being able to run on any monitor. I mean, come on, it's freaking 2018. I think everybody expected that. All of the current game's tools that help ensure World of Warcraft is a welcoming and fair environment, such as right-click player reporting, will also be in the BlizzCon WoW Classic demo. So as you know, back in Vanilla WoW, you could not right-click somebody and report them. You could not right-click somebody's name and ignore them. I'm guessing the reporting feature confirmed to be in the game, um, but I also think the, the right-click ignore feature will also be included in the game. I think you're going to get a lot of that battle.net functionality that's already built into the modern client. A lot of those small things are going to be built into the game. I don't know a single no changes advocate from the most fanatical of them that did not expect battle.net to be incorporated some way, shape, or form. This is that battle.net incorporation. So as far as I'm concerned, wasn't unexpected. I'm a purist, but at the end of the day, if this is the extent of the changes, again, this was already expected. It's not that big of a deal. You'll also find that post-launch accessibility options, such as colorblind mode, are in the demo. Though as we were working on it, we realized some words and images used in the current accessibility panel come from the modern game. So we replaced the modern icons with some classic icons and removed the term heirloom since it doesn't appear anywhere else in WoW Classic. It's important to us that in situations like this, we blend the old and the new and so a way that it still looks and feels like the game you remember. To me, this makes me very, very confident in Blizzard's vision for Classic. It's clear they want the game to look and feel like it did back in 2005 and 2006, so much so that they're willing to go out of their way to change some icons in the interface panel to look like the icons from Vanilla. And again, I think that's fantastic. I do believe they're trying to recreate an authentic experience. They've told us as much, but we're finally seeing that they actually have applied this philosophy in-game. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the final paragraph of this post. Guys, if you're standing up, sit down, hold something, you know, um, grab some tissue paper if you were expecting this game to launch this quarter. Because unfortunately, guys, um, as excited as Blizzard is about the BlizzCon WoW demo, we don't want to send the message that we're done because we're not. There's still lots of work left to do. And the BlizzCon demo is an important step in the process of bringing the original WoW back to life as authentically as we can. Great, as authentically as we can, fantastic. But unfortunately means they still need more time. This is a great chance, they're talking about the demo, for you to see the direction we're heading and give us some early feedback. So be sure to leave your thoughts in the classic section of the WoW forums. Thanks for playing and we'll see you in Azeroth. I think I mentioned this on the classic cast that we did after the classic demo was announced. Um, I thought this demo was going to be a great opportunity for feedback, testing, and exposing the player base to their vision for Classic. I think more or less Blizzard feels the same way. I think that's the intention behind this demo. They want to give us a, a little bit of a teaser, not a teaser, but more of an inside look uh, as to the direction they're planning for the game, and they want to see how we react to it. But unfortunately, that does mean that they are in the very early stages. They say so much here, uh, which... I know for a lot of people, it's going to be very disappointing. If you go back to my original predictions video that I released a couple of weeks after BlizzCon last year, it was one of my first videos, I guesstimated between 18 to 24 months after BlizzCon, which means I think June to December of next year. I still stand by that estimate. I don't think we will get a classic official launch until at least June of next year, although we might be able to get an alpha or a beta before then. Unfortunately, if you were planning on playing classic on Christmas Day, I don't think that's going to happen. We probably won't be seeing any kind of alpha or beta until I would say end of Q1 next year. So maybe February or March, if I had to take a guess, because it does seem they are in the very early stages of this, which is disappointing. But at the end of the day, when I see things like, you know, we want to recreate this as authentically as possible. When I see things like we want to recreate this as it was in 2005 to 2006. When I see things like Blizzard changing icons to be as they were back in vanilla instead of the modern icons. Makes me happy, makes me confident, and yeah, means Classic WoW might be a little ways away, but at least when we get it, it will be the right version of Classic. It will be the pure version of Classic. It will be the version of Classic that we've waited for for years. All in all, my reaction to this post, 
The BNET stuff is a little bit alarming, but uh, hopefully they clear that up. Again, I'll make a video about it pretty soon here. But uh, but yeah, overall, pretty neutral. I'm happy about the direction of no changes. The time restriction sucks, but at the end of the day, it was already time restricted. It was only going to be six days long to begin with. Um, I'm not so worried about that. I'm worried about the long-term impactful permanent changes like the BNET chat stuff we talked about. We'll see what happens. BlizzCon, 11 days, guys. 11 days and hopefully we'll have a lot more answers than just this. Speaking of which, in 11 days, as I said before, if the classic demo permits this, which unfortunately I don't think it will based on what we've read here, but if there is a possibility for people like us, for our community to be able to log in at the same time and host some kind of dueling tournament, I will be doing so, guys. And I just talked about that on stream a little bit ago. We talked about crowdfunding it in the community. Um, something like a couple hundred dollars from the community. I think people are very excited to donate to it. Um, I will try to put something like that together if it's possible, but it might not be possible, obviously, the first day or two. It'll probably be the last couple of days of the demo. We'll get something like this organized. But again, it depends on if we're capable of doing it, if, if the actual servers allow us all to be on at the same time. If they do, be on the lookout for a video of me announcing it. But uh, yeah, just another thing to get excited for, guys. 11 days, 11 days. Um, very, very excited. But I've been rambling for too long, guys. I apologize for that. I want to hear your thoughts on this. What do you guys think about this Dev Water Cooler update? Are you excited? Are you not excited? Is there something that you liked? Is there something that you really hated? Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to see the community's reaction to this because at the end of the day, these are just my opinions. And obviously, there's millions of you guys. So would love to hear your thoughts. And if you guys want to discuss this stuff with me personally, Join my Discord channel. We recently got Discord partnership. But aside from that, have a wonderful day, fellas. Congratulations on the news. And as always, tips out, baby.